So some very interesting news happening right now. Bill Ackman is actually shorting the Hong Kong peg, which is very interesting in this environment. And he's doing it because he believes that the Hong Kong peg is no longer viable in this environment. And so that's what I'm gonna cover in this video. So guys, as you smash that like button, let me run that intro. What's up guys, and let's get right into this one because it's very interesting whenever somebody tries to short the peg, a lot of people have done it and nobody succeeded of course because the peg still exists, but let's dive into this one. And so you can see here, as it was reported in the Wall Street Journal, Bill Ackman bets against the Hong Kong dollar peg and he says that the tie to the US dollar no longer makes sense. And this was said in a tweet not that long ago. He said that the Bloomberg report on the pressure on the Hong Kong dollar peg, which keeps building, was a very thoughtful piece, and he agrees. They have a large notional short position against the Hong Kong dollar through the ownership of put options, and he believes, in his words, that the peg no longer makes sense for Hong Kong, and it's only a matter of time before it breaks. Now, if you're not familiar with what the Hong Kong dollar peg is, don't worry, I'll get into all of it and I'll explain why it matters. And so the Wall Street Journal article goes on to say that the Hong Kong currency has been tied to the US dollar since 1983, and it floats between 7.75 and 7.85 Hong Kong dollars per US dollar. And so this setup is known as the linked exchange rate system. And so the city's de facto central bank, the Hong Kong Monetary Authority, HKMA, sells US dollars if the currency gets too weak or buys them if the Hong Kong dollar gets too strong. And I'll show you how that plays out in the next slide. And so the system effectively means that Hong Kong has to adopt US style monetary policy. And here's the problem, because sometimes Hong Kong may not necessarily benefit from US style monetary policy as much as they would benefit from another monetary policy. And so that's why in the article they hear, they say that whether or not it's appropriate for its own economic circumstances, and which is absolutely true. And so the city's monetary authority has sold nearly $31 billion worth of US currency in defending the peg so far this year, which is far surpassing the 2.83 billion that they spent in 2019, which of course was the last year when it had to sell reserves to defend the peg. Now, I want you to remember that last point. They sold about $3 billion in 2019 to defend the peg, and I'll show you what it did to their interest rates because when you defend the peg, effectively what you're doing is when you're selling US dollars and you're buying Hong Kong dollars, what you're doing is you're taking Hong Kong dollars out of circulation. When you take Hong Kong dollars out of circulation in your local economy, it pushes up the borrowing costs because the dollars are fewer, they're more scarce, and so they're more valuable. And so if you're pushing up the borrowing costs, then it effectively weakens your economy because it's harder or more expensive to deploy capital. And so I'm gonna show you later in this video a chart of what happened in 2019 when they did decide to defend the peg. And that was with only approximately $3 billion. Now they just sold $30 billion. So what do you think that's gonna do to interest rates in Hong Kong? Of course, they're gonna skyrocket at the same time where they're dealing with a mortgage crisis and they're dealing with challenges related to the zero COVID policies. And so they have an extremely weakened economy. And here's how the peg has performed since 2018. You can see that anytime the exchange rate came close to 7.85, you can see that the last time it happened was in 2019, they were selling US dollars and buying Hong Kong dollars to strengthen the value of Hong Kong dollars because you buy the dollars, they go up in value. And so you can see that in 2019, they defended it with approximately $3 billion. Now you can see it floated to the top in 2020. And so they were selling US dollars to bring it back down. And now in 2022, going into 2023, they've been doing massive buyings to bring this peg back in order. And so it's kind of in that midpoint at the moment, but do they have to continue selling US dollars to maintain it within this range? Or does it naturally stay within this range? I think because consumption in China is weakening and consumption globally is weakening, this could be a challenge. Now, it's very interesting. As I was reading the tweet, I realized that the Washington Post actually put out an article a couple of days ago where they actually dove into the peg and why it matters. So this is very interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you certain points of this article. Guys, please look up this article. That's why I'm placing it here to read on your own. But I'm going to show you a couple of points and then I'm going to add on to that as I go through it. So the first question they ask is how does 
the peg work. And so the HKMA, the de facto central bank, has a mandate to keep the currency trading at 7.75 to 7.85 US dollars. And you already know that because I just explained it previously. And so from May 17th through November, the HKMA's intervention shrank the balance by more than 70%. And so now that tighter liquidity has pushed up local borrowing costs. And so none of this is new to you. I've explained all of this thus far in the video. And this is what I promised to show you previously. This is what the interest rates in the economy in Hong Kong, the high bore, which is a Hong Kong lending rate. This is what happened to it in 2019 as they were defending the peg. Notice that that sort of like gold line, it started increasing as the borrowing costs were increasing because there was just fewer dollars in circulation. And so what they're saying here in this article, and this is a different article, this is from the Wall Street Journal. I, I'm showing you the front of the article at the top right there. The article's name is Hong Kong dollar peg, how it works and why it's in question. And so this was an article released in 2019. Currencies respond to interest rates as capital flows to where it can get better returns. When the monetary authority sells US dollars to buy local currency, this drains Hong Kong dollars from the market. That pushes up borrowing costs, which can in turn increase foreign appetite for Hong Kong dollars. So that's effectively what's happening. And of course, it'll hurt the local merchants and business people because their borrowing costs become higher. So the question comes down to why does the peg matter? Well, the reason why they have a peg is ultimately because it's an anchor for financial stability. And a stable currency is important for an open economy like Hong Kong. Other people would tell you that the reason why the peg exists is because Hong Kong can become an export center for the world because if they allow the currency to float freely and you guys let me know if I got this wrong in the comments below but if you let the currency float freely there's a lot of people that suggest that the currency would appreciate relative to the US and so any benefit from producing in Hong Kong and then selling it into the US or exporting into the US will go away because of the exchange rate differential closing. And so you guys let me know if I got that right. There's some people who argue with that and some people who say that that's completely right. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'm not an economist. I just know what I read in the newspapers over the last 20 years or so. So the question becomes, what is the concern now? Well, in the article, they say that less liquidity as a result of defending the peg has led to increased borrowing costs this year for companies and individuals in Hong Kong at a time when stringent COVID-19 restrictions, especially regarding travel, continue to weigh on the economy and hurt employment. Hong Kong's property sector is already under pressure from an exodus of Hong Kong residences. And so it's exactly what I was saying. Borrowing costs are getting pushed up while simultaneously the economy is struggling from COVID-19 controls and the property sector busting a little bit. And so we're starting to see that really impact the economy. And Bill Ackman is not the only one who's got this short on the peg. Veteran trader Boaz Weinstein calls the Hong Kong dollar short a 200 to one lottery ticket. But what this Bloomberg article does say is that the two veteran traders are up against a history in their bets that they can hit a jackpot on the potential demise of a dollar peg that has survived repeated speculative attacks since 1983 and wrong-footed big name investors, including George Soros. So it's not an easy trade. It's not a trade that I'm making. I just don't know enough. And so this is largely out of my circle of competence. I'm less of a trader and more of just a business owner. And so this is why I would not participate in this investment, but you guys let me know what you guys are thinking. Now, as we move into December of 2022, Alibaba is going to have their investor day. And if you guys haven't seen it, because a lot of you guys, in fact, most of you guys are new to the channel right now. What I actually did was I did a 10 part series on Alibaba's investor day last year, and it taught us all a ton about Alibaba and their strategy going forward. And that's the main reason why I remain a bull on Alibaba. A lot of the things that they were saying in that investor day did come true. And so I'm very much looking forward to their investor day in 2022. But if you missed their 2021 investor day analysis, I think it's the most important series on this channel. And you can get to that video series right here.